Hi, friends. I am so thrilled for y'all to meet my friend Joellen today. She is a longtime saint sister and friend that is really great because she does her business in a completely different way than how I run it and from a lot of the ways that you might see a traditional saint artist or any network marketer running their business. So while she is on social media, she has primarily built her business by building a blog and leveraging tools like Pinterest and YouTube to really help focus on education. So she's a beautiful example of the investment model or the strategy for social media that we've been chatting about. And so I'm excited for y'all to hear Joellen's story, get to know her heart, and hopefully learn a little thing or two. So Joellen, thank you so much for being here today, girl. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yay. For those who aren't familiar with you, maybe give us like the backstory, where you're from, your family, your life, maybe even before you got into network marketing. Okay. Me in a nutshell. All right. So I was born and raised in Southern California. I come from a large family, a large and strong Christian family. We have six kids in my family and I was the second to youngest. So I have a lot of shadows that I was raised with. And so growing up, I was a little bit more timid and shy and I just put my head down, just did what I was supposed to and just was a good kid. But as the older I have gotten, I've learned to step outside of those shadows and learn how to shine my light in my own way, not just what my siblings did or the people that went ahead of me. And so over the years, I am still learning how to be me. And I think some big parts of that have been from my motherhood and our journey as a wife and mother and some of the things that we've experienced over the last probably seven years. I've been married for almost 20 years to my husband and I have four kids. My oldest is 18, 16, 13, and 11. I have three, three boys and a girl. And when we were living in Phoenix, Arizona, we lived there for about 10 years of our marriage. My husband and I just felt like we needed a change. We were just stuck in the rat race of that daily grind, the sports and the work and the church and the school and all the things. And we just started praying to know what we could do to have a more enriching, fulfilling life and not be stuck in that daily grind. And we prayed and we prayed and our answer was to move, but not just to move to another city or another state even, but to another country. We moved to New Zealand and that right there was a huge turning point in uh, stepping into who I was meant to be. I, we're all, we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses, we all have things that we're learning and growing through life, but that experience specifically really helped me pivot and propel my life into shine my light in a better way. And so we lived in New Zealand for two years, loved it, got outside of our comfort zone and learned so many things. And then our family decided the next chapter of our life was to travel. We traveled the world for a year together. And then we also prayed and prayed to see what our next step was in our life. And the answer was to move to Italy of all places. And so we lived in Italy for two years. And so all those experiences, I know they're totally not normal. They're very out there. I get it. But those experiences have helped me strengthen my ability to get outside of my comfort zone. They've strengthened my confidence and they have helped me in my business too. Oh my gosh. There's so much I love about what you said, but one thing in particular, and we were chatting a little bit about this before we hit record, is I really want when people are trying to decide what strategy or what approach to take and grow their network marketing business, especially when it comes to social media, you have to come and first start with who you are, the things that light you up, the things that bring you joy, the things you could talk about all day long if you want to put yourself out there. And so I love that before you even dove into the business, you got really prayerful about who am I? And you took major steps like moving across the world to figure that, which is just really such a cool story. But I definitely want to get more into how you feel like what you're doing now definitely suits who you're meant to be and who you are. But I also love that there is definitely clearly a deeper meaning and a purpose behind the name of your website and blog, which is illuminatebeauty.co, because it sounds like that being a light and that kind of radiating that, that inner beauty and that light that only comes from when you are truly operating from a place of who you are and who the Lord made you to be. So is that kind of the meaning behind your blog and the name behind it? Absolutely. I rebranded our team name. It's Team Illuminate. And then I wanted to rebrand my blog to it used to be IamJoellen.com, which is great still. And I still have that. But I wanted to make it more meaningful 
and illuminate beauty was what came to me because yes, I feel like we all have a light to shine and beauty is so much more than just the outward appearance. And when we feel good, we do good. And so when we can illuminate our gifts and our strengths and help other women shine, that's where that true beauty is. Oh gosh, so good. And I bet, I know you work very hard and I definitely want to get into the nitty gritty of what your schedule looks like and all of those things in, on this episode. But I feel like when you can have a grounded focus and a mission and a purpose that goes so far beyond just, I want to start a business or I want to make money or I want to grow a team or whatever that looks like, that's what's going to give you the courage, first of all, to put yourself out there. But it's also going to give you that 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 wisdom and inspiration and passion to keep going when it's not always easy, which we all know it's not. So yeah. I, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, OK, well, this is cool, a blog, Pinterest, this all sounds great. How did you get started for someone who's never even thought about that? Like, what was the first thing that you did when it came to starting something like that? Okay, we have to rewind to uh, my time in New Zealand. I was living in New Zealand. My All of my kids were in school at that point. My youngest had started kindergarten. And so for the first time, I had a day to myself without any littles following behind me or me having to take care of them all throughout the day. And I kept busy doing chores and I was actually a leader of our church there. So I had things to keep me busy, but I was looking for a creative outlet, something that was for me and something that I can enjoy doing. And I remember seeing on Pinterest, a bunch of lip scents. You remember the lip scent brand, a bunch of like lip swatches. And I just was really fascinated. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. That'd be so fun to have a business and to like have swatches and to teach women how to put makeup on and stuff. And I just started thinking about it, but I wasn't pursuing a way to find that. But then one one day, my sister-in-law called me and she was like, hey, I have a business proposition for you. I want to start a business and I want to know if you want to start with me. She's, I'll do the business stuff because she was great into marketing and business and all that stuff. And she said, you do the beauty stuff. So my education background is in beauty. I am an esthetician. So I went to skincare and beauty school. And so I, I love that. And so it just made sense. And so I wasn't necessarily looking for a business opportunity, but she presented it to me and it felt right. And so I knew absolutely nothing about blogging, about video, about photography, about editing, about any of that stuff. And so I said, yeah, I'm willing to, to try, but you've got to teach me. And she had courses on Pinterest, on blogging, on all those things. And so I became a student. I was totally outside of my comfort zone, but I was willing to try. And so I put in the work, I took her courses, I learned, and then I implemented. And so we started from scratch. And our mission from the day one was to build our business completely online. And I know a lot of times in network marketing, people thrive on doing in-person events and all those fun things. But our mission and goal was to just build it online because I was in New Zealand, she was in California, and so we needed to make it work for the both of us. And so our goal was to create a blog and it's just a packet full of great information that if people are Googling, we would be the answer to their question. And so we built our business with our blog and Pinterest definitely is a huge part of that because you can pin the things that are on your blog. And then I started dabbling in social media and getting more knowledge and experience in that. And so now I'm on all the platforms just to, so that's easy for people to find me. But so I started from scratch, absolutely learning all the things because I knew nothing from the start. That's so cool. And I I love Michelle too. I actually, I've been wanting to have her. I need to get her on the podcast as well. And we'll make sure to link some of her courses in the show notes of this, because I know she's got a lot of great resources. And that's one of the reasons why I call this the investment approach is because sometimes you do have to invest your time and sometimes money in something like a course where someone can walk you through the steps of how do I start a blog? How do I really do Pinterest well? And we're lucky, obviously, in our company, we're so blessed that you were able to do a breakout presentation at our conference specifically related to growing your business on Pinterest. So some people will have heard that, but if they didn't have that opportunity, it's still out there for you, but it does t- take getting really focused. And that's another thing that I talk about a lot here, which is pick your path 
and fill your funnel there. So instead mm-hmm. of initially getting distracted by all the other ways that everyone else was building their business, which you're so right, at the time it was primarily in person. Social was an, a facet of it, but I would say it wasn't quite like it is today. But you guys put your blinders on and laser focused in on doing it in a very unique way that suited at the time her skills, but then something that you could learn and thrive in along the way. That's really cool. So tell me about the partnership side, because I forgot about this and I forgot that you guys did start your business together, right? Do you still run your business together or does, or do you primarily do it now? Because I know she has her own, all the courses and coaching and stuff that she does. So we started it together. I was her downline. And then a couple of years into it, she's so brilliant and she's always has so many great ideas that she felt like she did what she was meant to do with that business. And she wanted to spread her wings and do something else. So now she has a marketing agency that she is just growing and it is just thriving. So she no longer is part of my business, but she handed it all over to me. And it's going back to the whole thing, feeling like I was in, always in a shadow growing up. I, even with her as a business partner, I felt like I was in her shadow because she was the brilliant business mind behind our business. And I was just the face. And I say that I don't mean to demean myself, but I just felt like I was hiding behind her because she was so much better at the business and all the things that I learned from her. And so as soon as we parted ways, I was able to step up and stand out and shine my light in my way and become the leader that I was meant to be. She, I could not have done it without her. She was taught me everything I needed to know to get me going, but I was able to take what she learned and taught me and then just propel myself forward. And I've been able to quadruple our business since then. Thank you for being very vulnerable and honest and sharing that because I know, especially a lot of siblings, I'm the oldest of my little brother, but he was the darling because he was like big into golf and all that stuff. And so I know what it can feel like, whether it is like your actual siblings or again, a sister-in-law that kind of takes off and knows all the things. But now truly, I know you're known in our company for sure as the expert when it comes to this. And again, it's just been really cool to watch what you've done with the business. And it's, I'm so excited to be able to share some of the wisdom that you've shown. So let's talk specifics. So you started with the blog and you, like you said, you answered questions. Like what are people searching, which I've already done. Oh, actually, I don't think I've aired it. It'll air after this one, but I did an episode talking a little bit about the importance of SEO search engine optimization. And it sounds like that's what you guys did. You were tackling exactly what people might be searching for when it came to the makeup and you created the content specific to that. So then how did you leverage things like Pinterest? I know that's a big buzzword. It's obviously what you talked about or even YouTube. Like how do you tie it together? What does that look like in terms of like content creation? How did you tie it all together? So my block is my hub. That's my bread and butter. That's where all the information is and that's where I get up huge part of income from my business. And then a way to promote your blog is to pin your images and your pins on Pinterest. And so that goes hand in hand. It's like you're marketing for your blog. And then the same thing with YouTube is if in my blog post, I let's say it's about the difference between contour and bronzer. Then a great way would be to have a YouTube video that is in, embedded into my blog posts that people can watch because we have all types of learners. We have visual, we have audio, and people who just want to read or people who want to actually want to see something. And so it's great to have a blog post that has a few things. It has the words, it has the pictures, it has the videos. And so that's when YouTube goes hand in hand with blogging is because then I can use a YouTube video in my blog post and then I'm on different platforms and I'm now on Pinterest, now I'm on my blog, and now I'm also on YouTube. So it's just is a better way for people to find the information that they're looking for. Okay, that's so smart to basically, instead of trying to think of it as, oh, I've got to do create content here and create content here. And I know that now you doubt you do a little bit of that with things like Instagram, and we'll talk about that. But really, it's the blog is the hub, the home for it. And then things like YouTube and Pinterest connect to that. So it's the same questions, the same things people are searching for. But because Pinterest, for example, I learned this from you at your presentation, Pinterest is a search engine, right? At its core, yeah. that's what people are doing. And so when they're searching whatever product, whoever is listening represents, they are going to see the things from your blog, which is then going to take them, say, maybe to the video that, like you said, is up on YouTube, but it's embedded, which makes them stay on your website, right? which then like Google happy because they see, oh, people are staying on the, the website longer. Is that how it works? Yeah. I'm learning yes. myself. Yeah. 
Yes, you're doing great. <laughs> and as because I've shared a little bit with you, this is definitely something that I'm personally wanting to like dabble in myself. And so I do, I think it's one of those things that it is, it's, it is going to take a work and it is going to take effort and it is a little difficult. I'm sure you can agree to figure out and navigate a lot of these tech components. But I tell you what, it's not as hard as trying to go viral on a post on Instagram or playing the lottery on TikTok by just like doing, spinning your wheels, doing five yeah. reels a day especially if that's not your natural gift and skill set. And I know there are women like us listening who are like, show me how to do it. Tell me what to do. I can follow some steps. And I love to teach other people how to do things and keep it simple. I know both you and I are simple cows at heart. We appreciate so mm-hmm. And so when you can tap into that, I think this can be an amazing opportunity, an amazing platform for people to leverage the growing online digital marketplace which is going to change even as we know it with things like AI, which can we talk about that? Do you know anything about that? What are your thoughts? I keep hearing buzzwords about it, but I haven't done the research to see how I can implement it in my business yet. But so yeah, stop. Tell me the things. (laughs) I'm going to interject with this because why not? Learning out loud, right? That's what this podcast is all about. I was trying to find a way to shorten my my YouTube actually because I'm putting these podcasts like this one. Hello, YouTube. When you're watching this on YouTube, but I'm putting them on there. But obviously, my podcast titles are very long. They're, they're meant to be very search keyword friendly when people are searching for certain things on the podcast apps. But on YouTube, I know it's supposed to be... Actually, that's what I did. I went to the AI Google app, bard.google.com. And I said, what's the ideal number of words in a YouTube caption, cover photo? And it said seven. I said seven or less. I was like, okay, great. Can you shorten this title into seven words or less? And sure enough, it gave me six or seven different bullet points of ideas and options for titles that would be a shortened version of what I already had. And so I think that something like AI could be a very useful tool for people like you or like me who are online digital content creators whose brains sometimes just get a little bit Mm -hmm. maxed out. I know that was a little side note, but again, these are the type of things that like, you're always going to be learning and growing. And do you find that's a part of the fun for you? Do you love to still figure things out and to still learn? Is that a part of what brings you joy? I love content creation. That's my favorite. I love creating the videos. I love writing. I've been pitched before. People are like, well, I can be your blog writer and you can hire that out. But I'm like, no, I really find joy in that. That's who I am. I'm a writer and I'm, I love to create the content. But if I do come across something that I figure I need to figure out, I, I don't shy away from just Googling it, just going to YouTube and finding an answer or finding on Google. But I'm, I'm, I'm a, definitely a learner at heart and I'm, I'm not afraid to dig in and figure it out. That's so smart. And yeah, you're so right. Everything's out there. The resources are out there. If you just look, if you just use your little fingers and search out there, or again, success leaves clues. And I know that's something that super pa- that you're super passionate about too, is that you can be inspired by what other people have done, but also do not copy, right? That it's not meant to yep. be something where you're saying like, oh, okay, this is what Joellen did. Here's what I'm going to do. No, like you have the beauty and the joy of this business is to find your own creativity, to find your mm-hmm. own voice. But maybe talk about that because I know you're super passionate about that. Yeah, we are surrounded by so many talented and gifted women. And it's really easy to find their things and want to copy them. And, but it's okay to be inspired by them because we are, we can learn from each other, but it's not okay to take exactly the same formula that they did and just make it yours, make it yours and put a spin on it and interpret it in a way that feels good to you, speaks to your specific audience, your time frame that you are in, whatever walk of life you're in, figure out a way to make it yours and not just a copy of someone else's work because that's not cool. Yes. I know it can be super frustrating for when you are a big face. Because if you Google Saint, Joellen's websites are going to be one of the first that pull up on anything that you could search. And she's done that very intentionally. But I'm sure that leads to people being like, oh, great, I'll just copy and steal this and do it. And it's no, that's not what we're talking about. This is you using your own gifts, your passions, your voice, your personality and finding ways to not only find the fulfillment that can come from actually like people finding you and buying something from you, right? Or even partnering with other brands or advertising and things like that, which I want to talk about that in a second. But more importantly, when you're doing the things that light you up, like you're saying, like when you're writing and when you're spending the time in your business doing the things that you actually enjoy, it doesn't feel like work. It feels fun. It feels fulfilling. And that's almost better than the income side of it. Wouldn't you agree? 
Absolutely, yes. So let's talk about, because when we talk about investment, we talk about the actual like physical things that you've, or the money you've invested, but then also your time. So let's actually start with the financial side of it. Because I I mentioned, which I meant to get permission from you beforehand. And then afterwards, I was like, by the way, we'll talk about you on the podcast. But Mm -hmm. it's not a previous episode that you have definitely made some investments in your business, some that have gone great and some that have maybe not gone so great. So how and when do you know when to invest in someone, like maybe a partner that can help up your game? What helped me about what that looks like and maybe your experience in that? So I love the idea of investing because you just learn more and you have to spend money to make money. When you put more money into your business, usually you make more money. And so it, it, it can be like, a, oh, I don't know if I can stomach spending this money, but in the long run, it usually it evens out in the long run. So some things that I've invested in are definitely like the courses. You can do Pinterest courses, blogging courses, social media courses. Those are all things that are definitely easy things to find online and make the time and the money invest. And and there's there are courses that range in all budgets from super inexpensive to mid-range to way expensive. So it depends on your budget, but definitely worth the money. Other things you can invest in are coaches. I've invested in like the Bob Heilig network marketing program that he has, also the Chris and Boss one. I just love to learn and I love to push myself and I feel like I can't succeed and go beyond a certain point if I don't learn more. And so there have been times where there have been things that I'm like, I maybe didn't get the most out of my money just because maybe I didn't put the effort into learning as much as I could, or it just, it didn't work out as good as I wanted it to. But in the long run, it's okay because you always, it's a learning process. So you're going to have failures and you're always going to learn from them. So you just know, okay, that wasn't that successful. So maybe I don't need to invest in something like that again. So it's just, I'm a huge proponent and a big believer in spending that money, but doing it in a wise way of looking at your business and saying, okay, what areas do I need to strengthen? If you haven't grown in a long time, that's your sign that you need to invest in something. Invest in a course, invest in free stuff on YouTube, your time, get outside of your comfort zone of what you normally do and see what you can do outside of that to propel your business forward. I love the quote by Einstein, insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting different results. (laughs) And so if you are doing the same thing over and you're not noticing growth, you've got to change things up. You got to get outside of your comfort zone. You've got to make the investments, whether that's in a course, um, in learning somewhere else or collaborating with someone. But those investments will definitely help you learn. It will help you grow and it will help your business succeed. So smart. Have you invested at all in advertising like Google ads or AdWords or things like that? Or have you primarily focused more on the SEO, like naturally finding it? And how have you seen that that be beneficial for your business? So last year I did play around with Pinterest ads and they, I don't know, it was expensive. It was at a time, they don't do this anymore, but it was a point where they would pay you for the views that your idea pins got. And so I justified it because it equaled out, like the things that, the money that was getting paid for from my idea pins getting viewed, it paid for my advertising. It was, it can be very pricey. And I think it was successful, but I stopped doing it because I didn't feel like it was successful enough to make the investment because I feel like it was just... I was spending more money than I was making at that time. So I did play around with that. That was one of those things where it's like, okay, maybe it wasn't as successful as I wanted it to be. But now I know that it's probably not the right investment right now in my business. I do have ads on my blog. That's not something that I pay for. They actually pay me. So you can do like Google ads. I do Ezoic. There are a few other ones, but you just have to go through an application process and be accepted And Google ads, it's really hard to work with because there's absolutely no customer service. So if you have any problems, it's really frustrating when you want to get some answers. And so I stopped using Google ads because I was having problems with that. And that's why I'm using Ezoic now. But so I do have ads on my blog that will pop up and I get commission each month from that. In terms of the commission, if you don't mind my asking, does it come close to the type of commission that you can make through your network marketing company through Saint? in terms of selling the product? Is it somewhat comparable or is it just a little bit of gravy on top? No, it's like a little bit of gravy on top for now, but I know that there are definitely blogs out there who make a lot of money on their ads. So at this point in my life, it's just a few hundred dollars a month, 
but it could get to thousands if I just keep at it. Okay, that's very smart. So the investment side, you touched on this too, is not just the money, but the time piece. And I know I asked you specifically what your week and what kind of each day, what your schedule looks like. And for those, when you hear her answer, don't be like me where you're like, oh, yep, I could never do that. Just know that there's different ways to do everything. But I would love for you to share what does a the day in the life or week in the life of Joella and mom of four kids <laughs> working from home, running a blog, but also balancing things like doing Instagram reels and stuff like that now? What does it look like for you? Okay, so you have to understand I love a to-do list. <laughs> so I love to make a list. I love to check it off. That's how my mind works. And so my list, I have at the beginning of every week on Sunday, I make a whole list out of what I'm going to do each day just to keep myself um, on track and intentional with my time. So Mondays, my mornings consist of me getting my kids ready and off to school. I've made it a big priority to move my body. So I go on walks or do Pilates or something in the morning. I have not necessarily a lazy morning, but not a rushed morning. I'm exercising my body. I'm having breakfast. I'm reading my scriptures. I have like my little miracle morning that I call it where I read something. I usually read 10 pages out of a personal development book, just getting my mind ready for the rest of the day. So if I'm not productive for the rest of the day, those morning hours were really productive. So that's how I start my morning. And then Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, I just schedule out different things. So Mondays usually are my scheduling days where I schedule out my Facebook group for my team and for my beauty group. I also do my newsletter. And then I always, every day I post on social media. So then Tuesdays, I usually do blogging. I'll do a couple blog posts and then my social media. On Wednesdays, I continue doing blogging as well as social media. And on Thursday and Friday, it's whatever else I can, I didn't get to the rest of the week. Like I'll do makeovers or other little odds and ends that I need to do for my business. And the Fridays I try to keep pretty open so that I can be flexible with family time or appointments or those kind of things. But I just have my daily essentials that I get done. And then whatever extra time I have, then I put in other time. So also like I post every day on social media, but I also schedule out through my week what days I'm going to be filming some of those videos. So whatever, at the beginning of the week, I know what I'm going to be posting Monday through Friday. And so during the week while I'm getting ready, I just make sure that I kill two birds with one stone. And while I'm getting ready, I'm also filming a video that I was going to post later on in the week. So I know it sounds overwhelming, but that's just how my mind works. I like to have it all listed out. I just have a notes section on my phone with my to-do list. And as I get something done, I check it off and I move to the next thing. I love that. So your newsletter, is that an email newsletter? And do you send that weekly? Yes, I send out a weekly newsletter and that's to my customers. That's also to people who have subscribed to my newsletter. I always have a motivational message. I share my top five favorite things. It, it also includes like a style tip or a beauty tip, a makeup tip, a confidence tip, skincare tip. So I just make sure it's full of value and it's something that people want to open when they get in their inbox. Do you still talk about the capsule wardrobe? I have been on social media, but I know that you and I shared a huge passionate obsession with that. Is that something that you still touch on sometimes? I don't touch on that so much anymore because now that we're not traveling and I'm not living abroad, I have gotten away from the sad. I've gotten away from the capsule wardrobe, <laughs> but I do still love the idea and I definitely still incorporate it when I travel. Yeah, it is. It's a great idea. So I'm sure they could search your blog and find out and find some old things because it's definitely been a blessing. And I'm, my, let's just say the number, the quantity in my capsule has definitely grown. I had to order more hangers on Amazon. <laughs> I know I have two and I'm like, dang it, I need to do better. <laughs> but it is a game changing. It's a good place to start, especially if you want to go from being a maximal, maximist as I'm to, to more of a minimalist lifestyle. Yeah. Do it for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. I know that there's so much more that we could talk about. And is there anything else that we haven't touched on that you want to, that you want to just mention before we hop on? Oh, I just want to say that if you want to succeed, you have to do the work. You have to get outside of your comfort zone. You have to put in the time, the effort, and the money sometimes to see the fruits of your labor. And it's easy to compare what other people are doing and how what may seem to be easy success for somebody else. But you have to know that everyone else is putting in the work and the effort too. We live in a, an age where we're just used to the get answers quick and get results quickly. And so We've kind of got a little lazy. And so we have to put in the work and consistency to see the results. Great, brilliant advice and wisdom. 
along with everything else that you've shared. And I know that if anybody wants to follow you a little bit more, they can certainly read your blog. But what is your handle on Instagram if they want to follow you there? So on all of my social media platforms, you can find me at I am Joe Ellen. It's I A M J O E L E N. Okay, awesome. That's great. I'll make sure to link it all in the show notes as well. But definitely go check out Joe Ellen. She's a beautiful example of how to grow your business in a different way. And honestly, I couldn't think of a better person to share this investment strategy as well as you have. So thank you for being on today, Joellen. You're amazing. Thank you, Heather.